Named after a nearby village, archaeologists discovered Rosemarkey Man in 2016 in a remote cave on Scotland's northeast coast. The skeleton was found buried in an alcove. It lay in an unusual cross-legged pose, and the skull was cracked. He's been radiocarbon dated to between 430 and 630 AD. This is the early Middle Ages, when the Picts, an ancient group of people, lived in Scotland. We actually don't know that much about them. They didn't have a written record. Okay. These are rather racy images based on what the Roman description was. They've got tattoos, or they're painted, and they're fighting naked, men and women. The Romans described them as barbarians. Mm -hmm. They actually fought the Romans off. The Picts were so feared, the Roman Emperor Hadrian built a huge wall, 73 miles long, to keep them out of Roman Britain. Sue found the first impact on the victim's mouth. There were fractures to both the lower teeth and the upper teeth, and fractures in such a way that the tooth had been sheared. So that's not a punch, that's something much sharper. One of the upper teeth was found inside his chest cavity. So has he inhaled He's inhaled that. it. That tells you he was alive when that happened, because we wouldn't have got it in his chest cavity had he been dead. Next, there was a blunt force to his jaw. But it's also it's fractured both of these as well, because there's been such an upward motion. Yeah, huge force. Yeah. It's likely the third injury was caused when the victim fell backwards and hit his head. But that wasn't the final blow. They have gone through the left temple, and out through the right temple. <clears throat> Whoever it was, they wanted him dead. Yeah. So in an entry wound, the bone is beveled on the inside, and on an exit wound, it's beveled on the outside. And when you see the exit wound in particular, it's circular. Yeah. So there's a circular exit wound that says that fits well with, you know, a lance, a spear, something along that, that sort of line. Even so, there's a fifth and final injury. That comes in on this space here. And it's again a penetrating injury. So something has really come down hard into that space. So clearly this is a really violent death. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about that whatsoever. Scientists piece together enough skull fragments to interpret face muscles producing a facial reconstruction of how this man, who lived 1,400 years ago, might have looked. No, you imagine he's the guy that you're heading towards and you want to bring him down. He looks to me like the kind of person you don't want to give a second chance to him. So who are your suspects? There's a possibility that it was an invader. Then there's a possibility that Rose Markey man wanted to convert to Christianity and maybe that ruffled some feathers and maybe people didn't want to change their way of life. And then somebody would have wanted to get rid of him because of that. Yeah, I think that may have been the catalyst, but I think that the actual root of it is, is that someone wanted his power. I'd like to throw in a fourth. Okay. Metal worker. There was a customer who was not happy, and he happened to be trained, and he targeted him. The only thing that I can be certain of is how he was killed. Very deliberate. I'm kind of stuck on why or who would have done that. Thing. They have the skull with clear points of impact. If they can figure out the murder weapon, it may tell them who wielded it. The team has found a Pictish weapons expert, who they hope can match weapons to the injuries. Paul MacDonald recreates axes, swords and spears from images carved on Pictish stones. They want to show him the injuries detailed by Sue Black. Okay, so Sue thinks this is the first one. And you can see it's come in and it's broken teeth and he's inhaled, it's like shock because he's got a tooth down here. 
Do you have any thoughts on what you think might have caused that? So the staff is one of our most ancient weapons there is. It's a big stick. So the injuries you could deliver with a staff would be either concussive striking injuries or thrusting actions with the end going into the face. So it would give a wider injury, wouldn't it, on the jaw there? I think you're spot on. You're not going to get that penetrative action smashing through bones with the point of a blunt stick. So the next uh, martial step up would be a spear. Now the early spears had bronze points capable of penetrating and thrusting through softer tissue. So with that arrow shaped spear, that's going to create a wider gap, just not as pinpoint or precise. Exactly, it's going to cause a much wider injury um, and you may even see evidence of the, the, the thinner section of the blade here as well and we don't see that there. The other thing we're looking for is something that's circular in cross-section. Well, there's a whole other side to the spear we can uh, look at. This was another form of reinforcing the end of the spear and making it a weapon at the same time. And it happens to give us that rounded, tapered section for concentrated force. I believe Rose Markey Mann was a man of power, a man of influence, and probably a political leader. He's a meat eater that's eating some fairly high trophic level foods. This killer was someone who wanted to seize that power or neutralize him. Now, during that time, there was a lot of change happening. Rose Markey Mann was probably a man who was resistant to change. I don't think that it was a surprise to anyone except Rose Markey Mann. It was clear that it was a pointed, rounded weapon. And that's easily delivered boom, from above. These were severe blows that were inflicted in a very skillful manner. He's placed into a very shallow grave. He was lying on his back in a supine position. His head is tilted upward and his legs are folded. He didn't fit that hole. They just wanted to get rid of him and dump it. A stone to the groin suggests someone wanting to display some power or a finality. Taking into account all of the evidence, Rod thinks the most likely murderer was 